My name is Niels Bruno and I'm a freelance journalist and uh, from Denmark, so I'm from a rather egalitarian society and that may also uh, explain why I pose the next question. Uh, so it's about trade-off between equality and growth, basically. Uh, there are people who would suggest that you need to accept a certain degree of inequality in order to have more growth. Uh, I would very much like the panel to address this question and maybe if you have some knowledge about uh, the extent to which there is correlation between inequality and growth and whether this is a legitimate instrument kind of to, to use in policy uh, to, uh, to achieve more growth. I think this is something that you have not addressed yet, and yeah. I, I think it's an important topic. No, I absolutely, thank you. Perhaps I, I have a couple of data for you, which I researched, the latest data, if you're interested, before we perhaps get uh, also the panels. The, um, the IMF actually published a really interesting study. I'm sure as a journalist you'll be able to dig the details out uh, again. And uh, they actually have made a study where they looked at the average GDP growth or erosion um, if the top 1% uh, of income earners, um, top 20% have a one percentage point of increase of wealth. Yeah? So if you have the top 20, the, the, the top quintile, as they say, of society earning one percentage point more, that actually for the next five years erodes 0.08% from GDP. So what it actually means, it doesn't do anything to GDP growth of a country if the top 20% uh, percent of earners earn more. Okay. However, on the other side, if the bottom 20% of any society earns more, uh, earns about one percentage point more, it shifts up 0.4%, so at almost half a percent of GDP growth more. And that would really go towards uh, the, the thinking that if you want to increase growth, GDP growth, you have to increase the median income of the lower income brackets. And I think we've seen this also in the latest German data, I don't know if you've been following it, when it comes to um, consumer data. Consumer spending in Germany, I think the latest data was up 3.6%. And that is interesting because we just had the minimum wage in, uh, uh, you know, introduced in Germany to 8 euros 50, as Kerstin also was mentioning. So there is a direct correlation between who earns and who earns more. And uh, there are other many, many studies where, uh, you know, the top guys, they have more money, but they, they spend less percentage of their money. However, if you give the lower income classes more money, then they tend to spend. I mean, they really go from, I've got 500 euros at the beginning of the month, and I have zero euros at the end of the month, and they're quite happily doing so. Yes. So that's exactly the opposite of what um, is being debated in my home country. Okay. Like, uh, you need more. I mean, people would say you need more inequality. We've reached the, uh, the uh, stage where we've created so much equality that it hampers growth. And we need more inequality to create more incentives for growth. Uh, so that's more or less the opposite of what you're saying. So that means there needs to be more competition. It's, it's almost uh, like in a plan wirtschaft where everybody is yeah. just very happy People and nobody wants to need to have more incentives in order to reach a higher degree of, a uh, higher level of wealth. Okay. Some points of view from, uh, from the panel here. I think it's a very, very interesting point. You know, it is, it is a debate which has been going on for 200 years, actually, so it is, uh, so it's, it's a huge debate. I actually want to simply say that, of course, uh, people should not see equality and equality like binary choices. It's not like zero, one. So both things could be true. It depends where you actually find yourself at a given point in time. You know, inequality, <clears throat> let's take the Gini coefficient, we measure zero, is when everybody has the same income to one, where theoretically one person has the entire income. So if you are a country which is at a pretty high level of Gini, uh, you know, the destructive elements contained in inequality might actually be so strong that they actually reduce your growth. So that could be a uh, uh, transmission of privileges that we talked about, lack of equality of opportunity for poorer people. Uh, that could be control of the political process by the rich. So there could be many of these elements. Well, if you're on the other hand, and there are not that many countries like Denmark, but you know, there are certain countries, and of course I come from a former socialist country, which was actually a big issue, was that lack of incentives because of uh, uh, sort of similar incomes. 
uh, then maybe you have gone too far. So maybe you should, so there, I don't think there is a single uh, sort of answer for everybody. Um, but it's a very old debate because, of course, uh, historically it was believed that, of course, you have to have inequality in order to have rich people so that they would save, so that there would be investments. So that was the original, actually, Ricardo's you know, view about inequality and so on. Uh, as you know, for example, Keynes believed actually that was very good and that was even going back to, to Max Weber, uh, actually that was very good so long as you don't really consume that, especially if you don't do it in an ostentatious way because it would actually make others, you know, dislike it. Basically, you become an investment machine. Uh, so it, it's a very old debate, but I would say that uh, you should, it should not be viewed as a, as a binary choice, and I think that actually depends where you are at a given point in time. <laughs>